Today, I'm going to show you how to set up Traffic Reverse Proxy using Docker in just 30 seconds with a single command. I figured it's time to show you a super quick way to set up traffic. I spin up new servers pretty often and having traffic up and running right away just makes life so much easier. Here's what you'll need before we start. First, a server. If you don't already have one, I usually recommend grabbing a VPS from Hostinger. You can find a link in the description. You'll also need a domain. If you grab a VPS plan for at least 12 months, you'll actually get one for free. Otherwise, you can pick one up from places like GoDaddy or Namecheap. And lastly, make sure Docker Engine is installed on your server. It's really simple to do, and I've dropped a link in the description with the steps. Once you've got all that ready, setting up traffic is literally as easy as running this command. The script first checks if Docker's already installed. After that, it'll ask for your email. Totally optional. It's just in case you want to get notifications about your SSL certificates from Let's Encrypt. Then it'll ask for a subdomain where it'll spin up a quick temporary page there so you can be sure that everything's working before you actually add the labels to your real app. And it's also optional, but I definitely recommend doing it because it's super helpful. That temporary test page will automatically disappear after about 10 minutes. You can remove it manually if you want, but honestly, you don't need to. After that, the script does a few checks on your DNS to make sure it's pointing to the right IP, and then it takes care of all the configurations and deploys traffic along with the test page. And it's done. Let's check out test.softs.top. And there it is. The test page is live with a valid SSL certificate, which means the script ran successfully and everything's working just fine. Now, I'll pause for 10 minutes and then try to access the page again. As expected, we're getting a 404 error because the test page was completely removed from the server. Perfect. From here, all you need to do is set up the labels for your apps with the domain, subdomain, or paths you want. Now, if you'd like to stick around, I'll walk you through exactly how this works behind the scenes and how the configuration process is handled. Otherwise, you can find the command in the description if you just wanted the quick setup. All right, let's take a look at the repository so you can get a better idea of what's actually happening here. Inside the Docker directory, you'll find the source code for the test page. This part is just for transparency. The script itself pulls a pre-built Docker image straight from Docker Hub. But if you're curious, you can check out exactly what's inside. It's just a super simple Docker file and the same index page you saw earlier. Nothing fancy. Now, the real magic happens in the Python script, which does all the heavy lifting. First, it checks if Docker is installed and running. Then, it gets ready to collect your input. Once you enter your test subdomain, it runs a DNS check to make sure the domain is correctly pointing to your server. If everything checks out, it goes ahead and creates the necessary directories for the traffic configuration, the traffic Docker setup, and the certificates. Then it applies the traffic config using your email for SSL if you provided one, creates the Docker Compose files for both traffic and the test page, and sets up the traffic network if it's not already there. After that, it deploys traffic, spins up the test page with that 10-minute auto-remove timer, and finally shows you the summary with all the details. Then there's the main installer script. This is the one you actually run. It's super lightweight and basically acts as an entry point. All it does is download the Python manager script from GitHub. Then it runs it using Python 3 and pass any command line arguments straight through. We do it this way because Python handles interactive input way better when you're piping commands from curl compared to a pure bash script. And that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.